the stock original Chrysler ammeter based charging system and the bypass. Promoted by some as a fix for some common issues that develop in the charging system circuit from that time. High resistance at the Packard connector, abuse at the ammeter terminals, um, otherwise uh, any number of issues that can develop over the years on this system that creates resistance in the charge path. And there are some who believe that installing the easy fix is installing a wire directly from the alternator output to the battery, typically via the starter relay. I've seen some who promote rather large wires directly connected and without circuit protection, a direct wire connection at the starter relay stud to the alternator stud. Um, what are the concerns here? The concerns are um, you are not only bypassing these typical high resistance connections and other issues that may develop in the charging system, you're also bypassing the stock fusible link. That fusible link is there to protect all of this wiring that is unfused at 12 gauge typically that supplies power to the fuse box, the headlight switch, the ignition switch. All of this wiring is unfused. Nothing is protecting it except the fusible link. A uh, 12 gauge wire typically used originally. Um, any short, anything happened to that wire, it touches the body somehow. Alternator output. Alternator can also develop a diode short and create a short. Any high current running through this wire is limited by the fusible link. Stock, typically 16 gauge, that's probably 30, 35 amps before that opens up. Um, they use fusible links here because they tend to react slower than many other circuit protection devices. Uh, fuse would pop instantaneously on any, uh, on, on any given spike, whatever the fuse is rated for. Uh, circuit breaker would also trip. A fusible link typically can absorb some of those spikes in current without actually opening up. But in the event of a short, you want that to open up or you'll be lighting up wires. Um, let's uh, review the original charging system and um, how it's supposed to work originally, basically. There's more detail on some other videos on this site. Uh, you may want to check that out if you really want the specifics of how the system works. But this is what it looks like in its original state, pretty much 1960 through mid-70s. Um, pretty much the same. Some of the earlier cars didn't have the Molex connector, the ignition switch, but it's, it's the same basic layout. The alternator is the provider of power while the engine is running. Um, not the battery. All of these loads, these factory loads, are being sourced from the alternator via the alternator feed through that bulk connect connection there. It's a Packard terminal, not really designed for that kind of current. There have been problems there. Then Splice, uh, splice 1. From Splice 1, all factory loads come off of Splice 1, switched or not. Um, anything going through the ammeter while the engine is running is a battery charging current. Should be very little, unless there's a problem with the battery. Um, moving on. Now we have our bypass in here. Um, the first discussion will be without any kind of circuit protection. You are now exposing all of this 12 gauge unfused wiring and components all now have unfettered access to that 150-200 amp potential of that battery. 
any short anywhere along here to ground will burn wires. That is not safe. Okay. Some, some say, let's add a fusible link here. Well, the problem with that is, is you're also paralleling the stock fusible link. Although you have now limited current access to these wires to these two fusible links, the total circuit protection has going to go up rather than the 30, 40 from the stock fusible link. We're now at 60, 70, 80 amps total to get both of these guys to blow if there's a short anywhere in here. That's way too much for this 12 gauge wire. You're still going to burn wires. Okay, some say, well, in order to avoid that, you simply disconnect the original alternator feed line from the alternator. Okay, that does get us around the paralleled fusible links. Removing that wire off that alternator changes the load path for your factory loads. It's no longer being supplied through the original 12 volt wire to splice one. It's being routed across your shunt wire to the starter relay through the, the battery return back through another bulkhead connector. All that current's going through another bulkhead connector to the ammeter, across the ammeter to splice one and then from there back onto your normal path problem with that is is now all these loads are being registered on your ammeter as a discharge. I uh, haven't really accomplished much of anything other than shifting this load through the ammeter. This ammeter is not designed for prolonged exposure to these kinds of current loads. The only real safe way to run this bypass uh, without addressing actual high resistant connections, packer terminals, um, is to reroute that alternator feed and splice it into your battery feed just ahead of the stock fusible link. This allows you to split the vehicle loads between the two existing Packard connectors. You will also need to remove one of the ammeter connections and tie it over to the other side since the ammeter is no longer accurately showing uh, the battery charge and discharge current it's defeated anyway there's no point in having it there but um, simply removing the red lead and adding it to the black lead will give you a parallel run to the splice one uh, that's about the only way to run this shunt wire bypass and not be adding stress to components not designed for that kind of current.